Okay, so we've got our Amcrest camera here. We're gonna open that. This is the 4MP, uh, it's Wi-Fi IP4M. Got it on Amazon for Father's Day. Open that up, and basically there's three things in here we want. The camera, the power cord, and the ethernet. Got a bunch of warranty information there. Some manuals that you're not gonna to need to do what we're doing today. Got the camera. This is a Wi-Fi capable camera. It has an internal antenna, but we're going to want to get to the Ethernet port on the back. We're going to configure this camera without using any of Amcrest apps or uh, you know other things like that. But in order to do that, you need some way to talk to it. It doesn't know how to get on my Wi-Fi, so we're going to give it a wired connection. So there's a little tripod in there you can mount to the wall. USB capable power supply. These cameras use five volts. So I'm gonna take, plug the five volts into the back of the camera, take the ethernet cable, and this is my Wi-Fi uh, uh, router, my Xfinity router. It has uh, cat six, uh, Jing Big Ethernet on the back, and we're going to use that. As soon as I plug the camera in, it will query the router for an IP address using DHCP. And once that happens, then it'll be on the network through the wired connection, and then we'll have to figure out what that IP address is in order for us to talk to it. So I'm going to plug the Ethernet cable that came with it into the back of the camera. I'm going to plug the Ethernet cable into the back of my router and power the thing up. You can see we're getting a blinking red light on the back right here. Uh, it's going to go through a power-up sequence. You'll see it uh, use its pan and tilt motors here. And then once the firmware started up and once it's managed to talk to the router, then we'll get a green light. And there we go, we've got a green light, which means that the camera managed to get on the network. Next step is for us to configure the wireless and give it an I a static IP address so that we can unplug it from the router. Okay, so I've logged into my router here and I can see all the devices that are connected to the router. I'm gonna start clicking through them. Here's one of the Amcrest cameras, device detail, Model connection type Wi-Fi. That's not the one we're looking for. Here's another one. Device details. Connection type Ethernet. And the IP address is within the range of items I know are allocated via DHCP. So let's take a look and try to go to that guy. 192. 192.168.1.139 and there it is the, this is a brand new camera and so the passwords for Amcrest by default are admin admin so we'll say okay now it wants me to put in a new password And I will say OK. And perfect. Now we're looking at the floor next to my uh, next to my uh, internet router. Now we want to start going into setup. I'm going to start by going to network. and connection Wi-Fi. I'm, it's gonna look at all the various Wi-Fi items. And okay, it found my various ones. The one I want is this particular one. And I'm gonna input my Wi-Fi password.
connected. Awesome. Now we have a new IP address. This is another one of those DHCP based IP addresses. That is not what I want. As you can see here, I keep a little spreadsheet of statically allocated IP addresses. I like to have static IPs for my various uh, uh, infrastructure type things, things that are typically always on Internet of Things like uh, type devices. So let's go up to TCP IP. <coughs> let's go to wireless. Let's tell it that we want a static IP and IP address 61. Preferred DNS, I don't know who that guy is, so we'll put in Google's DNS. One of the things that I don't like about the Amcrest cameras is they don't seem to be happy if they can't touch the gateway and potentially get out. Uh, they'll stick in a startup routine on Wi-Fi if this gateway isn't good. On other camera brands, I like to set the gateway to something that isn't actually a gateway. So that way, way I know it's very unlikely that the device is reaching out outside of the uh, Internet, at least if it's not doing something that's very dishonest and faking packets and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we did a save. Let's do a refresh on that and make sure that we like it. This is not my default anymore. This is my new personal password. And we are still connected. Let's go to setup again. Network, TCP IP. We are still on the wired connection. If we go to wireless, it did take our changes. So at this point, I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to unplug the camera from the Wi-Fi or from the router and power cycle it. And hopefully it should come back on and be available at this address via Wi-Fi. <laughs> Don't need that. We'll unplug this guy. Plug him back in. And there we see our red light coming on. He's going to try to connect up to a... Uh, Wi-Fi signal and hopefully this will go green here in a minute Got a, a suction cup mount that we're going to use to put this guy up against the window. Got this on Amazon. The link will be down below. I've used a bunch of these mounts. I like them. The only thing is, over time, they do dry out and will fall off the window. So you'll want to put a uh, emergency string up to the window blind or something like that to catch it. One thing I recommend: if you're going to put it up against the window, take this apart. Turn this part around so that it's back farther from the window. Uh, that'll make it work a lot better. And then underneath is a tripod mount. that guy in there and good to go pushed up and we'll just wet the back of this clean our window off a little bit up here stick this guy on move him over a little bit attach the suction cup and we will release this and rotate this to the side so it doesn't stick into the blinds and then we'll just have the camera rotate itself over. Plug this guy in. And then we'll go get back on the computer and make it go. 
Okay. So while we were upstairs, uh, it says the connection is over time. I think they mean timed out. Uh, so we will take a look here and we should be able to give it the new static IP address. Log into that camera again. And we get a beautiful picture, which is upside down because we hung the camera upside down. So for starters, uh, let's go and add this camera to Blue Iris. So we come in here. I've got a variety of cameras that are set up. A couple of them are unplugged right now. Uh, we're going to go up here to the plus. This unassuming little button adds a camera. So we will call this guy uh, Amcrest61 based on the IP address. And network IP, that's good. I don't want audio. I do want to enable motion detection. Put in his IP address. Put in the password for the camera. And then just hit find inspect. And it works like magic. Say OK. And max rate, we're going to turn this guy up a little bit. We'll let him run it, let's say 25 frames per uh, 20. I'm sorry. That's a timeout. 30 frames per second. Let's say 20 frames per second. That seems good. And we'll say OK. And there's our picture again now in uh, in uh, Blue Iris. So now let's start working with the camera. Camera properties. If you come in here, you can see what the bit rate is. And this is essentially the rate at which the uh, data is coming in over the network. So we've got about a half a megabyte or about 500 kilobytes or five megabits per second, which is a lot. Let's see if we can optimize that a little bit. In our case, we are not going to have a lot of movement on that particular camera, uh, as opposed to say one that was panning or one that had a lot of movement in the frame, because it's mostly going to be sitting still. So let's go to video. We don't need a sub stream, so I'm going to turn that off. We have one main stream that's going in code mode. 264 or 265. The new 4MP cameras support 265, which is good. That's a, a better encoding, more efficient. So I'm going to say save there. The resolution 260, 2688 by 1520. I like that. Constant bit rate. I don't want that. I'm going to go to variable bit rate and I'll turn the quality up just a little bit. Essentially, that means that each frame may take a different uh, amount of bits to send, which is a pretty good thing when you have a video image that doesn't change very much from frame to frame. So now we made those changes. Let's go back to here and we see that our bit rate has dropped about in half. And uh, that's a, a pretty good deal, uh, considering that I think the quality probably got a little bit better as well. So now we've got a variety of issues. We've got this logo on here. We've got a second time, which we don't need because uh, we put one on there already in blue iris and the picture's upside down. So let's go back again to our setup now and go to video. Let's go to overlay. I do not want the time on there. And after each of these guys, you have to hit save or it won't take. Oh, logo overlay. I don't want that. Go back here. And I'm just going to do a quick reset on the camera. Good. Those are gone. And the only pictures I got are the, uh, the ones that Blue Iris is putting on. Now let's fix the fact that it's upside down. Let's go to camera configuration. We're going to flip it 180. 
and turn neuron. And that looks right. That's what it should look like looking out of my bedroom window. Now we can come into Blue Iris. And it has the ability to pan and tilt. Not, not zoom, but that's okay. And so we will adjust our camera. That's too far. so that we can see our porch down there through the thing. And it's possible in the future I may move the camera a little bit so that I don't get as much of the window thing. Now you can see we are looking through a window here, which means that we do not want the oh, mirror that's it's confused. We can adjust this. Say save. The IR light we want off. Profile day, profile night. We want the IR day and night. And for each of these, I'm going to set it to color. I found that with the amount of ambient light around, that I really don't get better results if it goes into IR mode. And it looks like I've got something going on here where I've got an automatic pan and tilt, which is not what I wanted to have happen. So I'll have to adjust that in Blue Iris. Uh, exposure, leave that alone. BLC mode, uh, white balance, all of that stuff is fine. So at this point, it's pretty well set up. Uh, event, storage, network, I'm pretty happy with all of that stuff. So let's go back in here into Blue Iris. And I'm going to get the camera properties again. For the PTZ control, I find with these cameras that it works best if you set the speed down to two. And that tends to, uh, that tends to make it easier to pan and zoom uh, more precisely to get just the amount of movement that you want. Next thing uh, I want to record. So I'm going to go to record. For this one, record video continuous. Options. Uh, that's good. Video format and compression. For So for this one, I want to go to direct to disk. Essentially, I don't want Blue Iris to decompress, then recompress this. I'm running a bunch of high high quality cameras. And the amount of load that that puts on my PC is pretty large, even though I'm running a system. It's a 16 core, 32 thread system, but it's an older one. Uh, and the doing real time compression of five or six, you know, better than HD cameras is is a lot. So what the, what's going to happen with this is it's just going to take the stream directly from the camera and write it directly to the disk. Let's see. Trigger motion sensor. I want that. And create alert is list images when triggered. So that's pretty good. It's going to go through another reset since I changed some settings. And we see here you've got <coughs> the little red dot here, which means that we are actively recording so that we can go back to it. So at this point, that's about it. I've got another camera that's in place and uh, pretty happy with that. So, so if you like this video, uh, please give me a like down below or leave a comment in the text box. Thanks a lot.